Hi there. Welcome to my tutorial on making a snail cam in Autodesk Inventor. So um, we're going to be using parameters or a parametric table uh, to set up our cam so that we can adjust its size uh, pretty easily. So I have um, a part open here and the very first thing I'm going to do is to define that parameter and I'm going to open up the parameters table which is up here on the top rib ribbon. Um, and I'm going to add a numeric parameter, and I'm going to call it lowercase d. And when I hit enter, you'll see that it decides that d is going to be a parameter um, of in inches, and it's going to define it as one inch. Um, if you followed the other tutorial on the Project Lead the Way website, you will notice that they are actually making a two inch snail cam. So I'm going to change this to two right away. Honestly, it doesn't really matter as long as you have d defined and I'm going to hit done. So with that in mind, I'm now ready to start my sketch. And if you look at a snail cam, you can see that it's a big circle and a little circle. Um, so th there would be a big circle on the outside, there'd be a little circle on the inside, as is shown by the fact that there are two um, radii, uh, or this radius and this radius, are listed in the dimension um, drawing. So I'm going to make two circles that are going to be just guides. So if I go back to Inventor, um, I'm going to start a 2D sketch. And when I start the sketch, I can see how my top is sideways here. I'm just going to rotate this so that the text reads the right way, because that way when I use the horizontal and the vertical constraints in a minute, it will um, actually make them the right way. Otherwise, they sometimes end up backwards. So I'm going to make two circles that are just helper circles, which means I don't want them to be actual lines. I want them to be construction lines. Those are guidelines, not lines that I will be extruding. So I click on this button and make sure that that is um, highlighted. And then I'm going to go over here and click on circle. Making sure that I start in the center on the origin, I am going to make a circle and I'm going to define its distance as lowercase d which will make it two inches because that's what I define lowercase d to be. So I'm going to zoom in here, get that on the screen. So my other circle on the inside um, is supposed to be half of that. The um, radius for the inner circle was um, a quarter of the diameter. Of course, the radius of the larger circle would be half the diameter. So still in construction mode, I'm going to make the inner circle starting in on the origin. And this time I'm going to define it as D divided by two. And now I have two circles. So those are my guideline circles. Um, now I'm going to construct a little bit of the cam. So I'm going to take the construction line off and I'm now going to make some actual lines which will be part of my part. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is add the um, hole that the uh, axle is going to fit through and that should be 3 sixteenths of an inch. And you'll notice how that's a solid line that's because that is actual um, drawing lines and these are things that I can uh, extrude. Now, what I'm going to do is make a line on my snail cam. So over here, make sure this says line. Yours probably does. And I'm going to make the line on my cam um, that goes from uh, the uh, edge of the uh, axle to the edge of my little circle. So I'm going to make um, my snail cam start here, and then it's going to grow and grow and grow and grow until eventually it winds up there. So I'm just going to make a line from here all the way out to the edge. Um, and you'll notice that when I hit those edges, it actually, the circle lit up and it showed me that I was clicking on the line. And now I'm going to get rid of the parts I don't need. Well, I obviously don't need the part that's in the axle. And I'm not going to need this part either because that's going to be the inside part of my cam. So this is just the only part that I'm going to need. Now, in order to make that spiral, um, we'll be using something called a spline, the interpolation spline. But before I can do that, I have to give it points along which I can um, make it grow. So if you think about a circle as being, you know, four quarters, um, at this point, I want my circle to be a quarter of the way between these two um, spots. And at this point, I want my circle or my, my spiral to be halfway 
between these two circles. And here I want it to be three quarters of the way so that when it finally reaches the top, it's all the way out. That's going to be making a spiral that um, regularly grows by the right amount. And in order for this to be to grow appropriately, I can't just enter them as any old dimension. I have to use my parameters. So what I need to do is click on the point tool and I'm going to click um, and I'm going to make four points that are just sort of roughly in the right area. So one there, one here, and one here. Then I'm going to use the up here. This is the horizontal constraint. And by clicking on the point and the center, it drops it down to the line. And I'm going to do the same here, point and center. And then last but not least, using the vertical constraint, I'm going to get this guy, point and center to line up along the axis. Now all I have to do is um, dimension it so that these points are the right distance. And to do that, I just want to remind you that um, you're always going to be placing the point uh, to start with this distance, the diameter divided by four, because remember the large circle is one diameter. So half of the large circle would be half a diameter. That's what the little circle is. But we're only talking about the radius, so that's a quarter of the diameter. So d divided by four. And if you do the math, this would also be d divided by four. So the distance from the center to the edge and from edge to edge is both distance divided by four. So what I want to do for each of those points is to take this distance, d divided by 4, and add on to it a fraction, a percentage, of this other distance, which means I'm going to be multiplying by a decimal. So follow along as I type these numbers in. I'm going to dimension from the center of my circle to this point, and this is the dimension that you need, and you may need to pause the video if you get stuck on this. So remember that the first part from the center of the circle to the outside of the little circle is d divided by 4. But I need to add on to that plus some fraction or a percentage of the next one. So I want a 25% of the distance between the next two circles. So 25% would be 0.25. And then to multiply, I need to use the little star key. And then what am I multiplying it by? Well, that d divided by 4 distance. That's the distance between the two circles. So that's what I want this first dimension to be. And I will click check mark. The next one is going to be almost exactly the same, only instead of 25%, I want it to be half the distance. So d divided by 4, that's the distance between the center and the little circle, plus now 50%, 0 0.5 times the distance between the other two circles, which is d divided by 4. So that's the middle point. Check. And the last one is going to be 75%. From here to here, click. It will be d divided by 4, that's the distance between the center and the little circle, plus now 75%, 0 0.75 times d divided by 4. And that's my third point. So with that, I'm now ready to use the spline. So up here where line says, it says line, you scroll down until you see spline interpolation and you click on it. And it's going to look funny at first, but that's okay. So I'm going to start with the smallest part here, right on the inside. Make sure that that green dot lights up so you know you're actually hitting the edge of that line you drew. And I'm going to go from there, and I'm going to hit each point in circle in the, that I just drew. So the first one, and then this next one, and then they light up green when you hit them. This next one, and then the top of the circle. And it looks goofy. Um, but that's because right now it's just kind of curling all over the place. The last thing you need to do to make this actually look like um, a spiral is to use the tangent constraint. So I'm going to click on the tangent constraint and I want to make this spline tangent to the inner circle here. So I click here and the inner circle and then I want to make the outside of it here tangent to the big circle. And there it is. I now have um, a perfectly shaped snail cam. So I can finish my sketch. 
I can go to extrude, click on the part of my cam that's actually a cam, and extrude it at 3 sixteenths. And when I hit OK, there it is. And you'll notice that if I go back to my table and I change this from 2 inch to something else, you'll see that the whole thing scales nicely. And that's how you know that you're done. So thank you. Um, I hope this helped.